My name is Eric Burleson. We represent the 133rd District. And um, House Bill 1688, uh, the Poverty Relief Act, um, is about um, trying to do everything we can to um, offer some relief, some comfort to Missourians who need it the most. In the United States, we've been fighting a war on poverty for decades, and our aims have always been benevolent, but the results have often come short. So I'm introducing this bill because I believe that it's time for legislators to take a new approach to this troubling issue. This bill, House Bill 1688, exempts income below the federal poverty line from having to pay Missouri income tax. So I want to first show some, um, some uh, facts on, on poverty in the state of Missouri. Um, this, the Missouri poverty rate is 16.2 percent. Um, compared to the United States, that uh, the poverty rate is 15 percent. Um, if you look back historically, Mr. Chairman, 15 percent is the same rate that it was in 1966. Uh, the, the same poverty rate. Uh, 23 percent of Missouri children are born into poverty in the same, uh, which is the same as the na national average. But um, unlike other states, we rank 29th when it comes to the poverty rate. Um, and while many of us have heard these statistics before, um, they, they are still no less alarming, especially when the number of people living in poverty rise every year. And so that's why I think that it's time to take action to address it in a different manner. It doesn't make sense to me that um, with all of the programs and spending that we, that we do, that we also continue to tax families living in, in poverty. A family of four with an income of $23,492, which is the poverty rate, uh, that we tax them at 6%, uh, meaning that we, we ask them to pay $1,409.52. Uh, if our goal is to, is to encourage people to work, um, to, to in, increase their income and get out of poverty, so they can take care of themselves, I think that we're, we're punishing or we're, we're taxing something that we, want, that we don't want to do. Um, we spend a great deal of money on social services and social programs. Status quo, when, combat, when we combat poverty in the United States, um, we pump a lot of money into these social programs. We just have approved, proved it to be a very efficient effort into eliminating poverty, as evidenced by the fact that we have many decades, we are still at the same poverty rate. Currently, Missouri has nearly 40,000 families and uh, nearly 100,000 people receiving temporary assistance to the families. The average family, the payment is approximately $231 per month that we are sending to these individuals. If you take that into uh, consideration, um, attack, giving them a tax cut um, would, 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 um, would not only provide them a great deal of assistance, but also encourage them to um, and, and give them the pride that, that they're taking care of their family without assistance. Um, we we also spend not only that we spend a great deal of money on Medicaid. We spend nearly uh, we spend seven billion dollars on Medicaid to almost a million recipients. So this is a new approach. We're trying to help people keep money into their pockets, um, so they aren't as dependent upon government programs. Um, it doesn't mean to, I'm not trying to demonize any of the programs that we have in place, simply try to go about this from a different approach. Um, I believe that, uh, that the, but with this Poverty Relief Act, it comes down to one simple question. Would we rather tax the poor and use that revenue to fund the social programs intended to elevate poverty, to alleviate poverty, or would we rather cut out the middleman and allow our poverty stricken to use their own money to overcome their situations? Um, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to entertain any questions. Representative your physical note's over a billion dollars. Your physical note is over, yes. We spend a great deal. Uh, we spend a great deal on tax credits in the state too. In fact, I think our tax credits. Uh, you members of the committee probably know this better than I do, but 
we spent several hundred million, in fact, I've, I've heard $700 million on tax credits for, for economic development businesses. To me, I would rather they spend that, that they amount. They go away, right? I mean, actually, technically, if we're using, if we're cutting the tax to this degree, the tax credits available would be a lot less. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I, this wouldn't eliminate the tax credits. There are still people making above 6%. Or, or making above federal poverty rate are still would be still paying six percent of what they made above poverty rate. Okay. And we're going to have to hire more employees, uh, three additional employees, benefits, equipment, expenses to I, accommodate this. You yeah, I would agree or disagree with that. I would I would challenge that part of the fiscal note, sir. Okay. I especially the, the software. Part. Okay. And they're estimating that it's going to it, it would only reduce. Uh, Roughly six thousand dollars per new employee. If it reduced uh, as it, as existing desks, files, and cabinets, if they used those, it would just reduce their initial one hundred twenty-eight thousand by six thousand dollars a person. So right. I think what we're also missing is that what impact this might have on on a family that I think, in a way, is discouraged from from making more. Than they do today. I think our tax system discourages people from uh, trying to take to trying to go out and earn more to take care of their family. And I think this is this model by encouraging by basically cutting taxes 100% of the taxes for people up until the point that they are out of poverty. I think we we're encouraging people to to uh, get themselves and their families in a place where they are they're not in need of that assistance. Okay, well, think I, of, if you think of that in that regards. We're, we're really encouraging people to no longer use the programs that we are spending so much money on. My last uh, question is that is there any uh, guidelines of uh, triggers or anything that would stop this if we start losing a tremendous amount of money? No. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Spencer? On another bill, I questioned the level of poverty, what the line was, and then I started taking their answer, and then I went back and looked at different government sites on their definition of poverty. Do you have a definition of poverty for this bill, or? I'm using the federal poverty rate. That's on the Department of Labor site, or Department of? It is on the HUD site. Um, from the Department of Health and Human Services. No, and I had a, uh, a bill um, almost identical to this that was, we were actually supposed to hear for the last two weeks. Um, I would call mine the real poverty relief act. <laughs> oh, thank you. But uh, because what my bill does maybe is something that we could consider for your bill. Because I'm, I'm willing to forego the hearing on my bill since it's almost identical to this one. There's no reason to belabor the same idea on two different bills. But on my bill, uh, you wouldn't be charged uh, the income tax until you were at 100% plus 6% of the poverty line because the last thing we want to do is tax people back below the poverty line. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? So when it makes the poverty line and then we they incur 6% tax, then their net take home pay is actually less than the poverty line. So we don't want to tax people back below the poverty line. Right. Do you think that's well, something we could consider for this bill? It would be. I, I would be fine to consider that. That would be fine. Okay. Thank you. Is that Kelly? Chair Fire. Do you believe that, I know this has a large fiscal note, but do you believe in the long run the families that will be benefiting from this will actually reinvest that money, potentially put a down payment on a house, buy a car, yeah, spending this money back in the Missouri economy? Right. Fiscal notes, or as some call them, physical notes, are I, they never account for the, the huge change in human behavior. They're static. So, right, they're static, and so what they do is they make, they are not accounting for how this might impact the economy, how it might impact lives, or actually change or encourage economic growth and activity. And so, your representative will favor had a bill that I think was, it was along the same kind of lines that a few weeks ago I spoke in favor of, and couldn't believe that I was doing so, and once again, I guess I would have to speak in favor of this one as well, feeling that it would be um, an appropriate
direction, even with the fiscal note, that the long-term benefit to the right. state would well, be worth? Well, the, well, the fiscal note is, I, is, is large. I do think that this is the right approach. I think that um, trying to encourage um, a, a tax cut on, on people certainly below the federal poverty level is, is something that we should look for. Thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you so far. Uh, this, uh, I, I apologize for bringing this forward. That I uh, think it's the right direction. You made the one statement that, um, you know, if we can fix, uh, the, you know, we can tax the poor and use that money to fix their problems, or we can allow them to take care of themselves. Do you see this as then if we do this, then obviously we're going to have uh, quite a struggle to remove a billion dollars from of revenue and, and deal with it, with that issue. Do you see our response as a legislative body then to cut food stamps and cut, uh, you know, make major cuts? Well, I, I mean, if you think about it, this year our surplus is close to a $700 million surplus. That how much we put in the budget? That's that's what the between uh, we haven't, uh, lady, we haven't even gone through the budget yet. I know we haven't, but, but I know there's some discussion. But the, but we are looking at you know a surplus of significant size. So something of this scope is not, I think, impossible. And if we are really going to do something bold that addresses people in poverty, I would much rather uh, go in this direction. I think this is uh, a, a big step. The only thing I think that would um, hinder this is the fact that they, that people in this income bracket won't have health care unless we choose, unless we're able to deal with I'm not sure that, that I'm not sure I agree with that because people that are working full time um, generally provided health care by their employer, especially now that it's mandated. Um, I don't see that. It, I don't see. I understand what you're saying. Well, I mean, but it's our, not, I mean I'm talking about expansion because we we're not expanding. Uh, I, but so those people don't have health care in this particular uh, at 100 percent below. So right. Well, that they wouldn't qualify for Medicaid is what right, you're saying. I'm saying right. Yeah. Um, seven, in which of that statistics within that group, 75% of the population that qualify have some form of private health insurance provided them by their employer. I thought that. So what I'm saying is that not everyone, the, that population, this population that you're talking about, just above the federal poverty rate. Not above, but under the federal poverty rate. They do rate. have access to insurance. There's quite a few of them that do have access and do have insurance. Not all I would be interested. Yeah. And let's, you know what's hard. Let's move our comments to the bill. So this you. is unrelated to the bill. Oh, uh, one last question. What is the figure that you're using for poverty? I mean, as you said it was. Uh, it's it's uh, the federal poverty rate as established by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And that under the authority of, of USC nine nine o two two. You don't have a figure. You know, oh, I can, you want the actual yeah. number. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on the on the year, but uh, for an individual, it's eleven thousand four hundred ninety dollars. For a family of four, it's twenty three thousand five hundred fifty. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It is right. That's right. Those figures are right. All right. Um, what we're going to do, since uh, Representative Kirkman's bill is almost identical, I'm going to have him come up and. So that way, with people testifying in favor and against, can do it at the same time rather than just repeating the process. His his bill is twelve sixty nine. Does he have a nice slideshow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just comment, so I thought I'd let the other representative do all the work. House Bill Representative Paul Kirkman. District 109, House Bill 1269, I jokingly refer to as the Real Poverty Relief Act. Um, the only difference in the bills really is that uh, before somebody incurs any type of taxable income, they have to be making 106% of the poverty line. The only purpose for that is, is because once they make the poverty line, uh, for, as far as income, we don't want to charge them 6% of their income as taxes, and then 
uh, effectively drop them back below the poverty line for the money that they have to live off for the rest of the year. It's really the only difference in the bills. Any questions? All right, seeing none. Anybody testifying to support House Bill 1688 and 1269? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, for the record, uh, Jim Lemke testifying uh, in favor of both bills. Uh, I represent United for Missouri and our 75,000 members across the state. Uh, our only caveat is that the language is clear that the bills, both bills, uh, would apply to uh, everybody across the board as far as uh, that uh, exemption of that income, uh, and not just those that uh, we, we believe in, in uh, equity within our tax policy. And although we've supported uh, bills uh, that uh, have been from the other direction, maybe more of a top-down direction, which we think are important to make us uh, compete as a state, we also believe in uh, this, this policy, uh, the idea of from the bottom up giving those that probably need the tax relief uh, you know, the most, uh, that it's a good, good idea, it's good government, good concept. So we believe this uh, would be equitable and we would support it. Question from the witness? Seeing none, anybody else testify in favor of House Bill 1688? Well, They testify against House Bill 1688 and 12 uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jay Hardenbrook with the Missouri Budget Project. Uh, Representative Kirkman continues to make me testify against these incredibly progressive proposals um, where the fiscal notes are just a little bit too large. Um, so the, the general idea, and I love that we get to talk about progressive income taxes and what these actually mean, because I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding of how um, a progressive income tax in Missouri works. So when you set the threshold um, at the poverty level, um, that means that everyone who makes that money below the poverty level gets that tax cut. So while we talk a lot about there being this flat 6% rate because our brackets are so low, truly no one actually pays that 6% because on their first chunk of income that they get, they get those lower brackets, right? So just so that everyone understands that, I think everybody on this committee has been through that enough now. Um, but then on top of that, uh, this isn't your um, gross income. It's not even your adjusted gross income. It's your Missouri taxable income. So it's three steps removed from what your actual income was. Um, so it actually winds up being much, much higher than the federal poverty rate. In fact probably around $9,000 above what the federal poverty rate would be on your gross income. Um, that said, starting from the bottom is definitely the way to go. Um, and uh, we uh, would certainly uh, be willing to, as we've talked about with the uh, very large uh, progressive ta tax cut last year uh, that Representative Kirkman brought in, we'd be interested in talking to him about ways to do this better. Certainly the earned income tax credit that this committee passed is a very good way to focus on um, really alleviating poverty in a way inside the tax code um, that you all passed, and we appreciate that. Um, also, uh, the other uh, bill that came up that just adjusted the tax brackets for inflation um, is another good way to do that without having these very large fiscal notes. Um, but certainly, we appreciate the direction that they're going. It's certainly better to focus on working class people who have lower incomes who will actually spend that money in the state rather than focusing on the top end where people will most likely either invest that money outside of the state or uh, spend money outside of the state. So this, certainly by moving towards the bottom, this is a much more responsible approach than other bills that we've had in the past, um, but just the fiscal impact of it is far too much when you start talking about the services that the state needs to provide to its people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir, I, I also uh, fairly disagree with this fiscal I, I was trying to point out, uh, as the, uh, the gentleman uh, mentioned, that sometimes they get a little aggressive with these. Uh, do you agree, though, that if we give you back $10 of your money, that you'll do one of two things with that $10? Either spend it or save it. <laughs> oh, sorry, right. Okay. So, in essence, that the more money we put in circulation, uh, as previous administrations as far as the U.S. have done, the economy's grown, and, and 
by, by grow, I mean more people are working, more people are spending money, more revenues coming in as far as the, the, uh, the, the sales tax and, and various other purchase tax, uh, you know, automobiles and cars and whatnot, which in essence grows. And I understand nobody wants to cut off uh, the revenue stream. And I, and I understand your, your opposition to this, but do you agree that the more money we put in to our uh, circulation, the more money in the, in the people's pockets, the more money will be circulated? Well, it, it certainly depends on how you go about doing that. Um, so, the, I mean, certainly the best way to get money back into the economy is a direct infusion of cash into the pockets of very, very low income people. And, and now, that they said, that you start while back, they sent checks back. Remember when everybody got a government check back because so no, but, not everybody. Well, some people did. Some people got a government. Check. But but then when you start to go further and further up the the income level, more of that money winds up being saved, invested, or or yeah, especially when you're talking about tax policy in in a state. If you um, people on I might keep fifty and, and spend fifty. I, I agree with that. But okay. but with uh, with our hand and, and you might not have to do something if we're if we're starting to uh, you know, grow too big, and we either have to send the money back to the taxpayers or cut their taxes. Well, and certainly that would be a, a limit that we would encourage you to use whenever you're looking at a tax cut bill as the Hancock lid. We're currently $3.7 billion below well, the yeah. Hancock lid as far as GR is concerned. So you can take that in real terms as far as inflation is concerned, but we are $3.7 billion below our spending from the 1990s. So um, General Assembly has done a pretty good job of cutting taxes um, uh, since the 1990s. We are so far below that lid that we could not hit it unless perhaps Wall Street decided to move to St. Louis um, or uh, Silicon Valley uh, relocated in the state. Um, we're, we, we don't have much chance of, of ever hitting that again. Um, but that said, um, you're, you make a, a valid point, but you have to make sure that you get the money back in the right way and certainly we would say that you have to get it back into the hands of middle class Missourians instead of getting it into the hands of much more wealthy Missourians who are, who are either going to spend it outside the state, going on Which is what this, or things this, like that. This is where this is targeted. Well, it, it is, but it's a tax cut for everyone. I mean, this is true broad-based tax relief. There's no question about that. Everyone who pays an income tax in the state will see a significant cut. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So we we know that um, eleven thousand what three three hundred dollars for a single person at the, who is operating at you know at the poverty level. What kind of taxes would that person now be paying, and so therefore we would be uh, saving that person that, that particular money? You have to know. Well, um, as we pointed out before, the people in the lowest quintiles, the lowest 20%, actually pay the highest taxes in the state as a percent of their income. Um, but most of those taxes are paid in sales tax, property tax, those sorts of things. Their income tax burden is actually incredibly low. Right. Um, so they're paying much, much higher taxes, but they're paying it when they go to you know the store and buy their kids' shoes, um, those sorts of things. So that's where that burden actually lies, and that's why something like a refundable tax <coughs> actually makes a lot more sense because they're actually paying a very, very high tax load, um, but they aren't paying it on the income tax side. Does that make sense? So if, uh, so what you're really saying is the person who makes $4 million in the state of Missouri is going and pays a 39% tax rate will get a tax cut on the first nine thousand dollars or well they or I'm, I'm talking about state taxes here not federal so they oh they, all right they don't, right. Even, they don't even pay six percent sorry i flipped out yeah all right so six percent so they they'll get a six percent cut on that um four million dollars uh into whatever taxes they pay on well they'll get uh, they'll, that first nine thousand first nine thousand yeah they'll, um, they'll get that same they'll get that same cut that, that everyone will I, and basically that's the sort of the beauty of a progressive income tax is everybody on their first chunk of income is paying the exact same rate. Right. And then as they move into the next bracket, so they still get to pay that okay. first portion at the same amount, and then the next portion they pay at the next amount, and so right. on. You never hit this cliff that 
um, you know, people worry about where you have a disincentive to work. It just goes up progressively as you get through the, the different levels. So, so are you saying then the millionaire and the guy who, who makes $10,000, $11,000 is really, that, that amount will be the same amount that they get back on their taxes because they're both at 6%. Well, the problem is that, again, I was talking about the thresholds earlier. So, uh, I mean, with, once you go from your gross income to your adjusted gross income to your Missouri taxable income, it actually winds up being higher. But certainly anybody who's at the threshold um, will wind up getting the same cut as people going going further and further on up um, because they will pay that. The, nobody will pay taxes on that first chunk of Missouri taxable income. All right, thank you. Representative Hey, I got this thing here from ITF, and I think you've seen this before. Um, and, and the reason I'm asking this is because I, I got a question in the fiscal note, or maybe, maybe it's written correctly, but as I understand it, people on the lowest 20%, basically where the, our poverty level is, are only paying 0.6% of their income on income tax anyway, because there's so much in deductions. Doesn't this fiscal note say without any of those deductions, says that, that actual 6% will be lost, but in reality, I mean, if this is right, only 0.6% will be lost. Am I looking at that wrong? Or? Well, the 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 problem that you're going to run into is that everybody gets this tax cut in a progressive tax structure. So it, it's not just that the people in poverty pay every single taxpayer. Well, I thought, I didn't think this bill did that. I thought it was just for the people below poverty. But no, that's what I thought the earlier testimony was. No, it's for said all income below poverty, not just people who are below poverty. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, anybody else testify again? The House Bill 1688-1269. Please make sure you fill out witness forms for both bills. I'm Jeanette Mott, actor from Missouri Association for Social Welfare um, again, uh, testifying against both, both uh, House Bill 1269 and 1688. Um, but I do appreciate the real concern about families living in poverty, and, and thank you, President Wilson, um, for uh, I enjoyed the slideshow. Uh, I also really appreciate Representative Kirkland's thinking of the bumping it up to 106, uh, so that you don't make people go back below. That's the the kind of progressive income scale or, uh, that that we recommend for things like you know food stamps or um, affordable housing or uh, energy credits that that we make things graduated so that you don't have that cliff effect where people make a little bit too much and lose all of something and, and get really hurt by it. Um, so uh, the, the, the thing about these bills, again, is that um, it's, it's kind of the wrong starting place. We, 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 I appreciate the concern for people living in poverty, and yes, I, I want them to have um, an appropriate tax rate, and I think that the, uh, the, the earned income tax credit bill that you all um, voted out of here, which I really, really appreciate, is the kind of way to, to attack that kind of issue, which is to say, let's bring a refundable credit to those families to offset taxes uh, in a way to lift their income up, which helps them get out of poverty. Uh, but a progressive scale would work better for, for the, the, the whole rest of the income spectrum that's out there. Uh, because it's more flexible for providing for our state's needs and it also takes into account uh, how much discretionary income is left for people to pay for their basic human needs. That's, that's, that's the, the thing is that when we look at the federal poverty level as a measure, we're talking about an outdated income standard based on a formula that was true in the 1950s and 60s that's no longer true. The federal poverty level is calculated only on the cost of food something called a thrifty food plan. What's the least you, you could eat and be okay? And then they multiply that by various family sizes. Um, and that's how we set the poverty level. Doesn't count the cost of rent, doesn't count the cost of transportation, nothing but food. It's a, it's a formula that was true then, it's not true now. Um, and, and so, um, a progressive income tax scale, adjusting our 1931 rates, it's truly outdated, 
for modern times, what do things cost? That would be a, a better approach. Uh, and then the other the other thing is I uh, the the notion that that people who you know th this this bill looks at what's taxable income and uses that uh, to um, to calculate where we're going to uh, start the, the taxation, which which means it would reach many people uh, way above the poverty level, but. If we're looking at people who are actually living at 100% of below the poverty level and think that somehow giving them some tax money back will allow them to invest in their local economy, no. <laughs> people that below 100% of the poverty level are already not making their rent, not making their utilities. Uh, they are begging for help constantly to survive. Uh, please, please sit down and do the math sometime. Uh, look at that living wage calculator that I've sent around a bunch of different times for you all to, to look at to see what it really costs to live in the counties that are in your district. It's, it costs way more than the poverty level to pay for basic human needs. I'm not talking about vacations. I'm not talking about investments. I'm not talking about nice cars. I'm, I'm talking about just to have shelter, just to have utilities, just to have food, uh, the real essentials of life. So please do the math on these things. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's painful to, to listen to folks speculate that somehow folks below the poverty level have given a little more tax money left would suddenly have money to make it. No, please do the math about what it costs to live. Um, so I appreciate the attention to trying to help folks in poverty, uh, and I wish that we could you know, work with this in order to, um, uh, to transform it towards something that, that would, would go all the way there. Uh, I'd, I'd love to testify in support of it, and I appreciate any concern that you have for people who are poor. Um, that is my real passion in life, as you all know. Um, I would certainly recommend to you uh, Representative Morgan's House Bill 1989 file today, which uh, would reduce taxes for 60% of Missourians, bring a refundable tax credit to those families, phase this out at 50000 for singles, 80000 for married filing jointly, and produces needed revenue that our, our state desperately needs for things like education and senior services and veteran services. Uh, and uh, all the other things that are bleeding to death in our state, mental health being high on my list of what we need to fund. I welcome any questions you have. All right. Anybody else testify against House Bill 1688 and 1269? You may testify for informational purposes only on House Bill 1688 and 1269. All right, seeing none, we'll now move to House Bill 1809. 